I have pictures of being in your apartment in New York after we went to Black Girls Rock. And you oh, yeah. had to cut me out of that dress. And we were at your house and the dress had split the moment I put it on. I guess I was enjoying myself in life. <laughs> <laughs> Anika, it's so good to have you over. As Thank we, you. I haven't seen you in what, six months? It's been about six months. Well, I'm so glad that we could sit down. It's been so long, so we could sit down and we could just have a conversation yes. for the Academy and yes. let them hear the way we actually talk about things. <laughs> <laughs> hear what happens when the cameras aren't here. Exactly. <laughs> so, how you, so how you been? Basically, how you been? I don't even know if it's fair to ask people that. No, I think that question should be like abolished now. I don't, just because hi. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. No, really, I feel, because... I actually feel really giddy because I, that's why we, when it came, I'm like, oh my God, you look amazing. You look, oh my God, <laughs> because I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah. Yeah, and it's hard because, you know, you want to see people. Yeah. And I miss our, our casual commune way of being, but there is no popping up. There is, like, everything has to have a plan. No popping up. There's no popping no, up. When people and pop so up, I get, yeah. I've recently, I asked some people how they were and, like, asked how family members were who I knew on two occasions recently, and on both occasions, the people I asked about had passed away. And I said, I, and to see their heart shatter in mm -hmm. the answer, I said, I'm not asking anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking how, you know? No, because that, that, that's a big how. Because how I don't doing? wanna crush somebody, not right. because I don't care or cannot you deal count, with right. the comforting, but I'm so many people have lost so many people like I can't mm. take them through that. Right. So, <laughs> so I anyway, wanna ask, we're fine. Oh, so I wanna, we're fine. <laughs> so, uh, so Anika, we, we've been arguing about this uh, before the cameras were on, but how long have we known each other? We have known each other. You always years. try to make it like- <laughs> 30 years. 30 years. 45 years. I would have been, you know, in middle school <laughs> and you would have been in college. But <laughs> why am I so old? 20, so 21 years we've known each other and we keep forgetting because we were supposed to have we an anniversary that. party but we didn't and both of us were working and we didn't have it but wait a minute so what is your recollection of how we first met we first met i was uh performing in robert o'hara's insurrection holding history at the geary theater mm -hmm. in san francisco and you had these braids I had amazing braids. <laughs> they, were, what, they were like super long. They were down to my butt purposefully mm -hmm. <laughs> for the character that I was playing. And they were like a very urban red, mm -hmm. which I wanted, <laughs> um, which was no natural color mm -hmm. on earth. And I had just finished the show and you were in the, I don't know, in the receiving, receiving era saying hello. And you were like, it's so nice to meet you. And I was like, no, no, we've That's met before. It. And I was like, no, we haven't. You're <laughs> I said, like, no, we have, actually. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and I was and like, we I've, had never, not. I've not seen you ever in my life, except <laughs> when I saw you on stage. And, and I thought we knew each other. It felt like it felt like we knew each other. Mm. And I and I think that from that moment on, we knew each other. <laughs> right. I want to know, how do you make time for all of the things that you do? Like, I feel like you move through the world like there are 35 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how, is that an active, I need to have a set plan for the day or is it your special skill? Like, how do you do that? I think I wake up early, as you wake up about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I like to get a lot done. I think I've become like my mother in that way. My mother like to get everything done by nine. So I may be getting up and running around doing things in the house, home things, but also taking time to like, I don't know, read. That's when I get my reading done. I'll, okay, I'll I'm read. I'm a night reader. I, see, you're, you're night, I'm, I read in the morning. <laughs> I feel like I'm popping. I get my coffee and I'll sit and I'll read some scripts or something or I'll do some writing. All that before anybody's up. And then I sort of just structure it like, I don't know. I, I like the. I think you've known me most I of feel my like career. For most of our professional lives. Most of our lives. professional lives. And you know that I think I operate best when I'm working on three or four things at one time. Because mm -hmm. I feel like my brain is the kind of brain that works well when I need to compartmentalize and focus here. I need to write that. I need to direct that. Whatever. And, I, and, I, and if that compresses time, 
Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if I think if I have only one thing to do, oh, I will procrastinate. That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right? the worst. So I'm glad that you spoke a little bit about your mom because your production company mm-hmm. is called Edith Productions. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of that answer was part of a question that I did want to ask you, like, how do you think that Edie prepared you for where you Mm. are in this space? Well, I think, and not to like deify a mother or anything like that, but I know that my mother has had a profound effect on everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I think that she sent people like you in my life. Mm. I think she sends me everything which is why i have her name tattooed on me my mother was like my mother was a true dreamer and believer and she had faith she always had questions she was almost like had a childlike quality to her Mm. was always curious like oh what's that what are you eating there i want to try that so she always she was like oh let's try that jj she called me jj you know that's my nickname so i think that that's how she's inspired all of this and prepared me for all of Mm. this the thing for sure that she always wanted me to live in gratitude for everything. Everything is giving honor to to spirit, whatever you want to call it. And so I think that that's how I sort of operate in the world. Mm -hmm. And operate in the world, she always said this, this is, I'll never forget this, and you tell me, because my mom, when I moved to San Francisco, and I was, you know, trying to be out there and being an actor, and the conversation we were having on the phone, I guess I was talking about myself a lot. And she was like, (laughs) you need to go volunteer or something. You know, find something to do with your time. And I was like, okay, she said, she, you, you're really good with kids. Can you go volunteer with kids somewhere? I found a school where I was an after school program teacher mm. and I was never more fulfilled, which is why I always teach. I always got to keep some teaching because they realized it, it makes you feel purposeful. Mm-hmm. And she said, she said, why? Because it's not about you. Always keep something in your life that's not about you. And that's how you will actually make it through this world. And so I, I do that, you know what I mean? I feel like she imbued you with so much love, Hmm. but she also taught you how to give that love. And I think that that's something that you express not only in your work and your acting, but in your life, Hmm. which allows your work to be an extension of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is funny because I feel like we don't really talk about work much at all together it's, it's wild we, ne- we never <laughs> there are times when people are like well what's anika doing i'm like i have no idea why she's there like what's she what is she doing in, in canada know. right now i'm like a show i think the name <laughs> is called this but we, but we focus on life but see honestly i feel like you and i have been able to navigate this industry and looks look at us we're 21 years strong as friends but because the thing that I had a problem with when I moved out here, to be honest, was when people were like, I'm like, hey, I, w- I would love to see you. I would love to get together. I would love to meet your kid or whatever. Oh, well, I'm going to have an event. I'm like, I don't, I didn't say event. I didn't, that's not what I do. I'm not there for your event. I'm there to actually have a connection with you. Yeah. And actually, and you, I want that. But, but I feel like we, you and I have been really great proponents of making sure that that's real, you know? Well, I don't. How do you know? I'm not good at the other thing. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you said it. You're not good at that. I'm not good at that. That's not your spirit. I wish (laughs) that I were better at it. I may, I I would maybe have a much better career. Um, And I'm not downing my career because I'm grateful for it. I just know that I have only so much energy for that part. But you kind of also like you're I, I think of you as like, I mean, the, the woman that I see out there on red carpets and things, I know you, you're a very sort of at home, quiet, one on one person. Mm-hmm. Like you, you live in the one on one and the real connections and like going for a hike, going for a walk, usually somewhere out in nature. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're like, it almost feels like diametrically opposed to the other stuff that we have to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it sort of is. And, and you know, I'm a, I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo Leo. So I really believe like that Leo is the space where you hit the carpet like, you know, or you're on stage like, (laughs) but the Virgo is like, okay, now we're going (laughs) to, let me put my onesie on. But see, that's what, every time you come over over here, you either, you come out over here, papa, with an entrance outfit. Or. And then you, but then you usually steal my sweats and yeah. <laughs> put them on. Yeah. I have pictures of being in your apartment in New York after we went to Black Girls Rock. And you oh, yeah. had to cut me out of that dress 
And I was, wait, why, wait, I feel like you're barefoot on the streets too. I was barefoot on the street after the show <laughs> because the shoes dress. were 10 minute shoes. <laughs> right. And we had been there over an hour. <laughs> and I don't believe in ugly feet. So I don't believe in wearing shoes longer than they say they should be worn. <laughs> so they were off. Uh, and we were at your house and the dress had split the moment I put it on. I guess I was enjoying myself in life, <laughs> which means a meal. Um, but it split. And so they had to sew it on me. And I looked very cute. But I got to your house and I couldn't get it off. Pow! <laughs> so, bam, bam, You were bam. trying to cut me out of this dress. So I was there like glammed, jewelry, your sweat, some socks up to my knee, <laughs> and living in my comfort space. <laughs> and that's how I like to be. And I, I think that, I think that I'm misunderstood actually quite often. I think that people may think something about me um, because I also have a naturally downturned mouth. So people think that I look See, mean if so I'm not a, smiling. Do, yeah, isn't downturned, is it? Well, no, oh, it's a little downturned. It has a little downturn. That, it so doesn't that, so naturally that, go is up. That, is that what they call resting? Is, is that resting bitch face? <laughs> it's not resting bitch face. No, I that's don't it. know. You don't have resting bitch face. But I don't, I think that, I think that people assume something about me because when I'm down or silent, I think I look, I'm very closed mm. or I appear very closed. And then we smile, it's so open. And then so, we have a connection right. and then perhaps you get to know who I am. But I do think that I, I can be misunderstood in that way. And really what it is, is I'm an introvert. <laughs> basically, that's so, what I, basically we're getting around to saying, I'm like, you're basically an introvert. I'm an introvert and you're with, with, and with you're, extroverted tendencies. And you always hang out with an extrovert. And I hang out with a social butterfly. <laughs> exactly. So then people get confused. They're like, okay, so wait, but yeah. yeah. Now I'm gonna ask you some other questions. Since we're, we're, we're having this conversation for our friends um, at the oh, Academy. Tasty. And I want to talk about some things that I think that it's, it's a conversation I know that we've had and I think we, we continue to have about, are we able to discern, critique our own work as um, in this industry? What do you mean by your our own, whose own? Whose own, let's say black people. Because mm -hmm. I feel like right now, only because I had this conversation just like last week, I wonder and I question sometimes, are we able to, because we have such a, we're still, still always trying to move the needle when it comes to representation, when it comes to black film and the black people in film. I don't want to say just black film, but black people are even in film. Mm. Can we discern, can we critique or sometimes, because I find myself wanting to pull away from a criticism of something because you want it to be there. Mm. You want it to exist. You want more opportunities. But then at sometimes you, you just want to be like, but that's not great. That's mm. not the best level of what we can actually be mm. or to interrogate the work in that way. And then you feel like, am I just being not cool? I'm like, you want to be cool, but you're like, I want the work to be incredible. Mm. And I want us to be able to really have a, a forum for it. So I've been having these conversations with people wondering like, how do, how do we feel? Can we do it? When can we do it? I am of the opinion that if we are honest in a critique, then the space that is there will be a space for something better. Right. But I think even on a larger level, you know, critics, and now this probably is controversial. I think that some critics are afraid to honestly critique the work of people of color. I agree. And I think that that fear lies in thinking they're going to be called racist if they didn't like something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think disliking something makes you racist. Right. I think the way in which you... The, w the way in which you look at it or examine it. The way in which you lay it out there, the language that you use yeah. may... If it, it may be may racist. They bring that to you. <laughs> right. It but may come up. you have to look at yourself and figure out how you're speaking. <laughs> right. Um, and, and did you stay in one place while film, art, people, culture moved forward? Um, but another part of that conversation is that there are not enough critics who are people of color. Absolutely. Who know from which they are speaking culturally. Yes, um, I and, agree. And I think that anybody can say this was skillful or this was not if they have the right base. Yeah from which to come. But, you know, there are people critiquing things just, well, I didn't like it. Well, that's not a critique. Right. 
And you know what else is not a critique? And what we end up with oftentimes is the blogger who just tells you everything that happened in the movie. Right. That's not a critique. That's you giving me a synopsis. Yeah. So I, I think that... I think criticism has to be re-examined, actually. I was just about to say <laughs> yeah. Criticism has to change. It has to open to more people. It has to be taught. But I think that when we think of the word criticism, even immediately we think it's something negative. Yeah. Criticism should be an, an analysis Absolutely. of something. And it's okay to say how something made you feel because art is supposed to make you feel something. Mm -hmm. But I need people to come from some sort of educated space before they tear something down that they don't understand at all or laud something that they don't understand at all because now you've done us a disservice. I wanna know, who would you love to work with? Who would I love to work with? Who you haven't worked, you've worked with some amazing and fantastic people, but who mm. you've not worked with yet. And they don't have to be like amazing and fantastic and like, you know, they're on time 100, but to you. To me, I feel like I really get in, I love working with like younger filmmakers, mm. new filmmakers, people who are like wanting to disrupt the form and stuff. Mm. Like, like working with Janixa Bravo or working mm. with them. Um, I just worked with Numa Perrier, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. I feel like young women. I think is always. I feel like I'm drawn to young women. Uh, uh, so they're strong and interesting, and and I don't know. I, I feel like Janixa is like Cassavetes, and I feel like she's so interesting, and she's also extraordinarily well. funny. Yeah, she, on Instagram. Yeah, we worked together, but it was so tiny mm -hmm. that I feel like you we need to moment. do something else because that wasn't that was tiny. What about you? Who? I was thinking, I guess, I would love to work with Anjanu Ellis. Mm. I just think she's like. Why do I feel, the strangest thing is, maybe because I've worked with her so many times, I felt like you've worked with her already. I have Because I, I just like her a whole lot. You two can play lot. sisters, I think. A lot. I'm just putting it out there. And sisters. what she did on that Clark Sisters miniseries Which that nobody she talked got, about, I don't think she, she needed, get, she a, she needed some sort of nomination for that because it was epic. Absolutely. That, that was she some held the, it down. That was the, some, uh, one of the best performances of this year. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I'm going to ask you an Academy-based uh, question. Yes. We, you became a member of the Academy three years ago? Four. I told you about me and time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I do and not I remember and I the year. Well, we both became members. I became, after you, I became right after you. Right after me. And I called <laughs> you, you because nothing. I was like, I would like to nominate you. You were like, oh, someone so already nominated me. And I was <laughs> Is like. Is that my voice? Is that how it sounds? Is that that's how it felt. That's how it felt. <laughs> <laughs> that, voice. So, so already nominated me. <laughs> so we are still very um, sort of, um, you know, at the beginning of our, um, journey journey with the academy mm -hmm. what are your hopes for the academy and what what can we do and how can we be a part of it and make some changes besides things like this right which is fantastic um hmm i think i would like when covid releases us i would like for the academy to be able to be a space that is more connective. Yeah, I agree. I would very much like that. There are people that I would love to learn from yeah. um, who I never meet. And you know, if you're at like an awards tea or banquet or something like that, there, there are too many things happening. There's right. too you much energy to running through that. that. Right. People feel like this. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they're stressed. You're trying to manage the night. They're trying to get through, you know, and deal with their 10 minute heels. And it's been an hour. Um, so I would love for the Academy to become more connective. I would like more of this with, with Academy members. I would like more I like- I would like this. I feel like more times when we can just throughout the year be in a room together with you people know, you don't with, know. With people you don't know. Yeah. Not, not just people, people who are like, hey, maybe, you know, there's, you know, I'm sure there's committees and subcommittees and things like that, but just like, hey, I want to talk about this thing and talk about how do we make our industry a bit more, you know, equitable and mm -hmm. inclusive, you know? I would love the opportunity. I know the Academy does mentorship for young people yeah. outside of what we do, who are trying to start doing what we do. I would love to explore mentorship within. Hmm the academy that's pretty like mm -hmm. what 
director can I sit up under and and learn from? Because I want to direct at some point. And I and I That's think that's a fantastic that idea. I don't want to have to bug somebody I'm working with in the time that we're working together and be like, hi, right. hey, so how'd you do that? Yeah, you can go, you know, you can go work with somebody. Exactly, there's mentorship programs I would very within much, the academy. Within the academy. It's fantastic. Um, like and crossing branches. Like cross branches to do that. And I think it would be a really cool thing. And I think it would strengthen us all as, as artists, mm -hmm. to, to be perfectly honest. I mean, this may be overstepping, but maybe the academy can create and I don't know if there is one, so forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, fellow members, a, um, a class on criticism. Hmm. We can be teach, teach young people about criticism, about criticism and, and how to, uh, yeah, Excellent. how to analyze. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Um, so that when somebody does put their heart's work on a screen, people can, and look, I'm not saying that there are great critics. There are lots of great critics. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to make sure that we bring up a generation of new critics who aren't just giving you a synopsis mm -hmm. to teach them what that means and how that works and from the inside so that they understand how much work goes into putting something together. Yeah. Well, I think this has been nice. <laughs> I think we'll just, just leave it there. This is a good conversation to have. I love talking to you. Me too. I've missed you so much. I missed you too. <laughs> and I just feel like we've, everybody been in exile. So this is exactly what I needed. And I'm really happy to see you. I love you. I am so proud, honored, happy, um, and completed by being able to call you my friend, my family. Thank and you. I thank you. Thank you. I love you. You know, I feel the same way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Coleman Domingo. Hi, I'm Anika Noni Rose. And for more conversation, please subscribe to the, the Oscars, Oscars YouTube, YouTube channel. channel.